Hi everyone and welcome back to what I think is part 11 of my Sarah Plays The Elder Scrolls Oblivion series. Uh, we just finished uh, talking with, why do I never, always forget his mate, name, Joffrey, about the fact that um, agents of the something or other Dawn uh, just stole the Amulet of Kings and uh, we have to go take Martin to Cloud Ruler Temple uh, because that's the most safe place that um, Joffrey can think of for him and that's where we're about to go. Get out of my way. Let's continue on no, to Cloud to. Ruler Temple. Way. I haven't had a good night's sleep since Kavach was attacked. We'll get out of the way. The sooner we reach Cloud Ruler Temple, the better. Lead on. Can you not see you're in the way? Get, move. Stupid computer game characters. Before we disappear, just see what's in. No, I don't want that. Oh, I have that. Surely, surely Joffrey wouldn't begrudge me some borrowed equipment. Why are these ones so hard to pick, I wonder? Oh, okay, I'm coming. I'm coming now. Oh, do we get a horse, do we? I forgot that we got a horse. Which one I skipped? I suppose that one's mine. Yeah, I can't remember how to make the horse go properly. Nope. This is going to be fun. You know, oh, there we go. That's how I do it. I have to use the strafe button to make him go around the corners. You can go a little bit faster. Why are you going so slowly? Well, I have to push shift. Oh my god. So many buttons to push at once. So I go that way. And then go that way. Thank you. Whoop. This is going to be... It's like playing dodge em cars with this thing. Am I going the right way? Um, I want that button. Where exactly is Cloud Ruler Temple? I think it was up here somewhere. Oh yeah, I am going the right way. That's good to know. I think I'll stick to the roads. Having enough trouble making the horse go on the roads, let alone trying to do it on the part on the hilly. Uh, am I going the right way? That's not my guy. Which way am I supposed to be going here? Yes, that is the right way. Oop! Ah! Oop! There's bad guys. You guys, you guys manage that. It's too hard for me to get up the saddle. Thank you. And um, how do I get out? Nope, that's not how I get out. There we go. I don't want any of that, but I do want that. Who is this guy? Just a general bandit. I hope I'm going the right way. Am I really going the right way? I, am. I really am going the right way. Gotta go all the way over there. Okay. Oh, oh, there you are. Oh, well, you weren't there a minute ago. Okay. We're going, we're going forward. Everybody get out of my way. Once I get going, ah. Look at that Imperial soldier. Crazed horse driver is coming through. Oop, watch the watch the trees. Oop, now there's a wolf. Get out of the Ooh. The training of thousands has passed. Kill him. It's too hard to kill him while you guys are in my way.
I'm going to need to find a somewhere to offload my stuff. Yeah. That button, that button, and go that button. Oop, can't see where the road is. Whoa! Oop, there's a bad guy. else worth getting. I wear, I'm wearing gauntlets, aren't I? Yes, I've got gauntlets, the same ones that she's got. Okay. We're never going to get there if we're constantly getting on and off the dam. Oh, I forgot to check the other dead people over here. What are they? Oh, they're deer. So that was a poacher, was it? Well, we can carry some of that for a bit. Wrong button. I want that button. You may end up having to drop it, but it could be useful to start with over here. Oh goodness! Oh, that's a tree. I thought it was a caravan of some kind. Okay. Get back on the horse. Forward, no, around, around the corner. Oop. Oh, for goodness' sake! How many bloody things do I have to kill here? So I came out and I got him. Ah, <sighs> dear. Oop, what a, that's not what I, how did I get it? it no, I didn't want to do that. No way, yes. Turn that way, turn that way. Up, nope, up. Which way are we supposed to be going here? Keep to the right. I don't understand why the mechanics of driving the horse had to be different from the mechanics of walking or running or whatever. Oh, look at that beautiful sunset, uh, sunrise rather. Watch out, though, buddy. Don't go that way. You have my ear, citizen. I don't need it. I'm just having trouble controlling my horse. Oh, look at that. That's a lovely view of... I have no idea what town is coming up. I suppose it's the Imperial City, seeing as we're looking in that direction. Now, got to remember to go to the left, the next fork in the road. And um, now we want to go a bit more around that way. Push that button and that button. Oh, we're in the Gerald Mountains. Oop. Oh. I missed him. Ah! Don't hit my borrowed horse. Take that. Are you standing? Oh, you're standing in a bush. 
I was say, why have you got greenery wrapped around your leg? Sorry about that, Mr. Horse. It takes me a lot longer to get off the horse than it seems to anyone else. Now we want to turn around that way. Push that button and that button, and then turn around this way. Nope. That looks like a bandit. Oh, that's the wrong button. Should be able to shoot from a horse. Shooting from a horse was a very common practice, supposedly. Oh, he sees me. Got him. Uh. There's another one, or is it just those two that can see me? That and that. Oh, we're nearly full. And push that button and that button. Oh, for God's sake. Well, that's a good shot. You rush it and you miss. Come on! Why am I not hitting him? Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> wow! That was pretty fantastic. Is that a oh no, it's just a rock. I thought it was a tent. Never seen a wolf fly like that before. This reminds me a bit of Skyrim. So we've got to go through Bruma pretty much to get to Cloud Roller Temple. Wild Eye Stables. speaking to you. Who's this dude? What is it now? Nothing. I'm only asking for enough to feed oh. me, kids. J Jork the outcast. Any rumors? Oh, you sure can tell a good story. I'm not normally a big fan of Bard's tales, but she's got some good ones. Right. Have a Thank coin, you, beggar. kind lady. Mm hmm. I can spare one. Things are the new My upon feet are killing me. I'm your relief. It's about time. Oh, hang on. There's the door out of here. No, I can't see it. It's got to go sort of to the left. Maybe up this street here. Oops, wrong one. Not these stairs, maybe. Broom and North Gate, that sounds promising. So we've got to backtrack a little bit. That gate there. Looks like it. That's it. Oh, 
I think we got our horses back. Right. Alright. And I want a bigger map now. So it's just really only one road there. Well, it doesn't look like there's only one road. I see numerous roads. <laughs> Um, I'll go with this one in the middle. What's that noise? Oh, it's the snow. Oh, and I'm gonna get my bow back out. This is the right one. And we've made it to Cloud Ruler Temple. And does this not look like, well, slightly less dramatic version of what you'd see from the top of, um, and I can't remember the name of the place in Skyrim, where all of the men with the voice live. Oh, gosh. They knocked me over. This, yes, I yeah. this is the Emperor's son. Martin Septim. Good evening, ma my lord. Welcome to Cloud Ruler Temple. We have not had the honor of an emperor's visit in many years. Ah, well, thank you. The honor is mine. Come, your blades are waiting to greet you. How do you know that? They might all be having dinner. Slow pokes. Blades, dark times are upon us. The Emperor and his sons were slain on our watch. The Empire is in chaos. But there is yet hope. Here is Martin Septim, true son of Uriel Septim. Oh. Hail, oh God, you scared me. Hail. Hail! Your Highness, the blades are at your command. You will be safe here until you can take up your throne. Joffrey, all of you, I know you all expect me to be Emperor. I'll do my best. But this is all new to me. I'm not used to giving speeches, but... I, I wanted you to know that I appreciate your welcome here. I hope I prove myself worthy of your loyalty in the coming days. That's it. Thank you. Well then, thank you, Martin. We'd all best get back to our duties, eh, Captain? Not much of a speech, was it? Didn't seem to bother them, though. The blade saluting me and hailing me as Martin Septim. I don't mean to sound ungrateful. I know I would be dead by now if it weren't for you. Thank you. But everyone expects me to suddenly know what to do, how to behave. They want an emperor to tell them what to do. And I haven't the faintest idea. We need to get the amulet back. Of course. The amulet of kings. So we, I, can take it to the Temple of the One and light the dragon fires. And stop the Oblivion invasion. And you will be the emperor. The Emperor? <laughs> That's an idea that will take some getting used to. In any case, we need the amulet first. Maybe Joffrey will know where to start. What about the Amulet of Kings? All practitioners of Daedric magic are familiar with the almost impenetrable barrier between our world and Oblivion. What the Emperor told you implies that the amulet is the key to the preservation of that barrier. If I see it Kavach, everything I know about Daedric magic says that such stable portals are impossible. Yet those, those gates, gates to oblivion existed. The old rules no longer apply. Kavach is only the beginning of what my rooms Dagon will do. If the amulet is truly the key to restoring the barriers between our world and oblivion, you must waste no time in recovering it. What can you tell me about Daedric magic? I haven't always been a priest. 
In my youth, I followed a different path. I know more than I want to about the seductive power of Daedric magic. Let's just leave it at that. What can you tell me about Oblivion Gates? Something has changed to make these stable portals to Oblivion possible. Joffrey believes that the death of the Emperor and the darkening of the Dragonfires is the key. Okay. Don't worry about me, my friend. Good evening, man. I know I'm in good hands here. Okay. You have proven yourself a loyal servant of the Empire, as worthy as any of the Blades to stand by Martin's side during this crisis. As the Grand Master of the Blades, I would be honored to accept you into our order. Will you join us? What are my duties as a Blade? The Blades are sworn to the service of the Emperor as the mortal representative of the Dragon Blood of the Divine Talos. Yes, I will join the Blades. It is my honor to welcome you into our ranks as a Knight Sister of the Blades. I got an Akaviri Katana. What can you tell me about um, the Amulet of Kings? You're right. We must try to recover the amulet before the enemy takes it out of our reach. You should go back to the Imperial City. Boris may have learned something about the assassins. You'll find Boris at Luther Broad's boarding house in the Elven Gardens district of the Imperial City. What can you tell me about Cloud Ruler Temple? This place was built by Raymond Cyrodiil Zakaviri Dragon Guard at the founding of the Second Empire. Since then, it has served the Blades as headquarters, fortress and sanctuary. We can protect Martin here until you recover the Amulet of Kings. Anything else to talk about? What can you tell me about the Blades? This fortress is well supplied with arms and armour. Use what you need from the armoury in the East Wing. Okay, thank you. Give my warm regards to Boris. Tell him he should not blame himself for the Emperor's death. He did well to send you to me. Oh, I'm over encumbered. Oh, well, I want to go and sell some crap. Is there anyone to sell crap to? I don't want to just dump it. Can I not move at all? I thought I could move a little bit. Eh. Good afternoon. Mm. Hail. Hail. Mm. I don't really want the Akaviri Katana. <laughs> I only want to shoot things. I don't want to... Oh, I can drop that. It'll still hold me a little bit over. I can eat. Okay, well I'll drop the drop the short sword. If I could, I don't know how to drop stuff. Oh, that is such a pain. Ooh, did I do it? Maybe I did it. Push shift and then clicked. Ah, yes. I finally remembered how to do it. Something's come up. It can't wait. What? Please, speak freely. The Plain of Oblivion. We know so little about it. What if the Daedra we've seen are only the beginning? I think we should prepare for the worst. This has been a concern of mine as well. And I take it the others, they're of the same mind. You know that no matter what happens, no matter what fate befalls us, together we honor the memory of Uriel Septim. Right. Well, we'll all have to remain extra vigilant. But enough chatter. Back to our duties, eh? Farewell. Why did we hear that? That was sort of pointless. Um... What was the other thing I was going to drop? Oh, I was going to eat some ingredients. I only need to need... Ugh, I can't speak. I only need to eat one kilo, I suppose you'd call it, of things. So, eat one of those. Eat one of those. Lovely. Eat one of those. And that's enough. Okay, now, 
So somewhere inside I can sell stuff. I'll help check my map before I wander around aimlessly. This is east and west wing. It's the path we came up. It's not helpful. I'm surprised to see you here. No, I want to Have you been to talk to Boris in the Imperial City yet? I'm here to sell stuff if I can find it. Find someone to sell to? Who's that? Baragon. Sorry, but I'm too busy to talk right now. Try one of the other blades. Perhaps Roland or Cyrus? Okay, sure. Where do these doors go? Sorry, but I'm too busy to talk right now. Try one. Is that Martin? Yeah, that's Martin. There's probably not going to be anyone who will buy anything from me, is there? Maybe I can just put it down here. I don't want to wear that. I want more arrows though. Oh, what's in that? I have that. Oh. Damn it. Have that and that. This one you used to be able to walk slowly with too much when you had too much stuff. <sighs> oh, I'll eat some of the rat meat. What's that? Uh, I don't know whether I should bother reading this or not. A Brief History of the Empire Part 4 by Stronach K. Thodge III, Imperial Historian. The first book of this series described in brief the first eight emperors of the Septim dynasty, beginning with Tiber I, Tiber I. The second volume described the War of the Red Diamond and the six emperors who followed. The third volume described the troubles of the next three emperors, the frustrated Uriel IV, the ineffectual Sephorus II, and the heroic Uriel V. On Uriel V's death across the sea in distant hostile Akavir, Uriel the sixth was but five years old. In fact, Uriel the sixth was born only shortly before his father left for Akavir. Uriel the fifth's only other progeny by a Morganat Morganatic alliance were the twins Morihatha and Eloisa, who had been born a month after Uriel the fifth left. Uriel the sixth was crowned in the year in the 290th year of the third era. The imperial consort Thonika, as the boy's mother, was given a restricted regency until Uriel VI reached his majority. The Elder Council retained the real power as they had ever since the days of Ketariah I. The Council so enjoyed its unlimited and unrestricted freedom to promulgate, promul, promulgate laws and generate profits that Uriel VI was not given full license to rule until 307, when he was already 22 years old. He had been slowly assuming positions of responsibility for years, but both the council and his mother, who enjoyed even her, even her limited regency, were loath to hand over the reins. By the time he came to the throne, the mechanisms of government gave him little power except for that of the imperial veto. This power, however, he regularly and vigorously exercised. By 313, Uriel VI could boast with conviction that he truly did rule Tamriel. 
he utilised defunct spy networks and guard units to bully and coerce the difficult members of the Elder Council. His half-sister, Moriharta, was, not surprisingly, his staunchest ally, especially after her marriage to Baron Ulfe Gerson of Winterhold brought her considerable wealth and influence. As the sage Ugaridge said, Uriel V con conquered Esronniet and but Uriel the Sixth conquered the Elder Council. Well, that's say very sage advice. That means a lot. When Uriel the Sixth fell off a horse and could not be resuscitated by the finest healers, finest Imperial healers, his beloved sister Morihatha took up the Imperial tiara. At 25 years of age, she had been described by admittedly self-serving diplomats as the most beautiful creature in all of Tamriel. She was certainly well learned vivacious, athletic, and a well-practiced politician. She brought the Archmagister of Skyrim to the Imperial City and created the second Imperial Battle Mage since the days of Tiber Septum. Morihatha finished the job her brother had begun and made the Imperial Province a true government under the Empress and later the Emperor. Outside the Imperial Province, however, the Empire had been slowly disintegrating. Open revolutions and civil wars had raged unchallenged since the days of her grandfather, Sephoris II. Carefully coordinating her counterattacks, Morihatha slowly claimed back her rebellious vassals, always avoiding overextending herself. Though Morihatha's military campaigns were remarkably successful, her deliberate pace often frustrated the council. One councilman, an Argonian who took the Colovian name of Thoracles Rom Romus, Furious at her refusal to send troops to his troubled Black Marsh, is commonly believed to, has, to have hired the assassins who claimed her life in 3E339. Rom Romus was summarily tried and executed, though he protested his innocence to the last. Morihatha had no surviving children, and Eloisa had died of a fever four years before. Eloisa's 25-year-old son, Pel Pelagius, was thus crowned Pelagius IV. Pelagius IV continued his aunt's work, slowly bringing back under his wing the radical and refractory kingdoms, duchies, and baronies of the empire. He exercised Marihatha's poise and circumspect pace in his endeavours, but, alas, he did not attain her success. The kingdoms had been free of constraint for so long that even a benign imperial presence was considered odious. Nevertheless, when Pelagius died after a notably stable and prosperous 29-year reign, Tamriel was closer to unity than it had been since the days of Uriel I. Our current emperor, his awesome and terrible, <laughs> awesome and terrible majesty, Uriel Septim the Seventh, son of Pelagius the Fourth, has the diligence of his great aunt Morihatha, the political skill of his great uncle Uriel the Sixth and the military prowess of his great-granduncle, Uriel V. For 21 years he, had, he reigned and brought justice and order to Tamriel. In the year 3E389, however, his imperial battle mage, Jaegar Tharn, Tharn, betrayed him. Uriel VII was imprisoned in a dimension of Tharn's creation, and Tharn used his sorcery of illusion to assume the emperor's aspect. For the next ten years, Tharn abused imperial privilege, but did not continue Uriel VII's schedule of reconquest. It is not yet entirely known what Tharn's goals and personal accomplishments were during the ten years he masqueraded as his liege, liege lord. In 3E399, an, enig an enigmatic champion defeated the battle mage in the dungeons of the imperial palace and freed Uriel VII from his other dimensional jail. Since his emancipation, Uriel Septim VII has worked diligently to renew the battles that would reunite Tamriel. Tharn's interference broke the momentum, it is true, but the years since then have proven that there is hope of the golden age of Tiber Septim's rule glorifying Tamriel once again. That's interesting. I think, well, I think it's interesting. It's only worth one dollar, so I think we can drop that. That's not quite under where we need to be. The wet, the warp in the west. That about? My block skill increased. Why did my block skill increase? <laughs> um, what's this about? The warp in the west. A report compiled by Ulvius Tero, Blades Archivist. 
secret for your eyes only. Let me offer my congratulations to your lordship for your recent appointment as ambassador to the court of Wayrest. Your lordship asked me for a review of existing Blades accounts from 3E417 concerning the warp in the west and for a summary of the current state of affairs there. Since your lordship was in Black Marsh serving in the staff of Admiral Sosorius at the time, you probably know of these events only from imperial proclamations and chapel declarations which identify this period as the Miracle of Peace. During the Miracle of Peace, according to official accounts, the formerly war-wracked Iliac Bay region was transformed overnight from a patchwork of squabbling duchies and petty kingdoms into the peaceful modern counties of Hammerfell, Sentinel, Wayrest and Orsinium. The Miracle of Peace, also known as the Warp in the West, is celebrated as the product of the miraculous interventions of Stendar, Mara and Akatosh to transform this troublesome region into peaceful, well-governed imperial counties. The catastrophic destruction of landscape and property and the large loss of life attending upon this miracle is understood to have been tragic and beyond mortal comprehension. Inasmuch as this count this account confirms and validates the current borders of these counties and identifies the rulers and boundaries of these counties as ordained by the Nine. The Miracle of Peace serves imperial objectives of peaceful consolidation of ancient petty states and sovereigns into manageable imperial jurisdictions. The other remarkable features of these events, mass disappearances, armies mysteriously transported hundreds of miles or completely annihilated, titanic storms and celestial phenomena apparent local discontinuities of time fit comfortably into the notion that these events are part of a vast mysterious divine intervention. However, this is only the public account of these events and as you may suspect it conflicts with many other accounts. In short, while this explanation suits imperial policy, it has, it has little historical validity. Your Lordship should know that the Blades have concluded there is no plausible historical account of these events and despairs that a plausible historical account shall ever be produced. The Blades have concluded that a miracle occurred insofar as the events are inexplicable, but the Blades strongly doubt the miracle was of divine origin. origin. There is good reason to believe that the ruling families of the four modern Iliac Bay counties had forewarning of the event. There is also some evidence that some of these ruling families may have been directly or indirectly responsible for the event. We do not know the exact sequence of actions that produced the event, although we are confident that the totem artifact was involved and that a Blades agent was involved in employing that artifact. We unfortunately lost contact with that agent immediately after the event. His report might have gone some way to resolving the contradictory and paradoxical accounts of the event. The Blades have on file few reports from agents dating from the warp in the West, period. Most of, the, most of our agents were lost in the initial dislocations, and others were lost in the confusion after the event. I present a few of these reports to give you a general sense, sense of their limitations, including the report of your diplomatic predecessor, Lord Strail. You will have had access to access to other private and rumoured accounts of the period. I believe you will agree that these documents raise more questions than they answer. The report of Hammerfell, Agent Briarbird. I was on assignment in the Alakir Desert, a few miles south of Bagama, on the 9th of Frostfall. I was encamped as it was still early morning. When I felt the ground shake so violently, I was thrown to the ground. Dazed, I was aware of a great roar of a sandstorm, which alarmed me, as I had been on a high dune and had seen nothing like that on the horizon. It was on me before I was even on my knees, burying me and my camp. When I crawled my way out of the sand, I realised that I must make haste and get to Bagama as soon as possible, as all my food and water had been swept away. The sun was just rising as I began, like I said. When I reached Bagama, it was nightfall. The town was in chaos, filled with the soldiers of Sentinel. The Lord of Bagama's fortress was in ruins. There had been an attack, but no one had seen it, only the invasion that followed it. The soldiers of Queen Akarethi of Sentinel refused to be interviewed about how they had accomplished this sneak attack, but I came to learn that the whole of northern Hammerfell now belonged to them. Even stranger, I discovered that, uh, that my walk from sunrise to sundown had not taken me had not taken me not one day, but two. It was now the 11th day of the month, not the 10th. I had lost a day somewhere, and so apparently had everyone else, except, except Akarethi's soldiers, who somehow were aware of the correct date. 
I since have concluded that they had received advance warning and so were better prepared to deal with the strange confusion of time and dates associated with the warp. The report of High Rock Agent Grey Lady. I was at the time of the warp undercover as a witch in the Skeffington coven of Fergius in central High Rock. In order to give my report, I had volunteered for an expedition to gather supplies which would allow me the freedom to reach my contact in Camlorn. I was travelling northeast along the foothills, foothills of the Rothgarian Mountains on the 9th of Frostfall when I felt a great heat behind me, like a fire. I turned, but I regret to say I cannot tell you what I saw. The healers tell me my eyes were burned out of my sockets. Uh, lovely. I think I must have fallen into a state of semi-consciousness, for I distinctly remember falling as the ground seemed to give way beneath me. Then there was a series of explosions in the distance to the south, and I heard high whistling noises that were getting louder, coming closer. I had my shield with me, and fortunately anticipated that volleys of some sort were falling from the sky. Though I could not see them, I could hear them coming from a distance away, and was able to use my shield to block them from striking me. The assault stopped suddenly, and I could smell smoke. I learned later that most of the forests of Yekalen and Fergius, Fergius had caught fire in an inferno that started further south in uh, Dania and the Ilesian hills. Fortunately, I kept my bearings and moved north, finally reaching a temple in the wilderness where my wounds were healed as well as they could be. It was there I learned that there had been a three-way clash between Daggerfell, Wayrest and Orsinium, not far from where I had been, and that the land midway between their kingdoms had been decimated. The report of Ambassador Lord Nagon Strail. His Imperial Majesty had sent me on a delicate errand, the details of which I cannot convey in this unsecure report, but my official capacity was to be the Emperor's Ambassador to the Court of Wayrest. From from there, I was to meet with an old friend, Lady Brissiana, who was already in the vicinity. Foregoing any attempt at stealth, I was on an, on an imperial bar barge sailing westward on the Bejewel Sea, the morning of the 9th of Frostfall. I remember it was a slightly chilly day, but the sky was very blue. We had just passed the delightful riverside village of Candlemas when the captain sounded the alarm. There, in front of us, was a colossal wall of water, at least 30 feet high. It smashed our barge to splinters before any of us had a chance to react. I woke up on the shore, having been rescued by one of my servants, who had miraculously not lost consciousness. He and I, and one of the men, were the only survivors. I thought at first that it was suspiciously similar to what happened to another agent of ours in High Rock, but a short time before, where a freak storm had shipwrecked him in the Iliac Bay near Privateer's Hold. Furious and determined to see if similar forces were at work, I began a quick march to Wayrest. The march, however, was not so terribly quick. The villages all along the Bejewel Sea were on fire, and battles raged between the orcs of Orsinium and the soldiers of King Idwe Idwire in the formerly independent principality of Gorvadon, just east of Wayrest. I am an accomplished mage and quite able to defend myself, but it took the better part of a week to make it those few miles to Wayrest. King Eardwire and his queen Baron Zaya were celebrating their great victories when I arrived. By then I had gathered the barest facts of the matter, that simultaneously there were seven great battles in the Iliac Bay, and no one could describe them at all, only their blood-soaked aftermath. To summarise, on the 9th of Frostfall, there had been 44 independent kingdoms, counties, baronies and dukedoms surrounding the Iliac Bay, if one includes the unconquered territories of the Rothgarian Mountains, the Dragontail Mountains, the High Rock Sea Coast, the Isle of Belfiera and the Alakia Desert. On the 11th of Frostfall, there were but four, Dragaf Daggerfall, Sentinel, Wayrest and Orsinium, and all the, re all the points where they met lay in ruins as the armies continued to do battle. I was determined to find the truth from the king, even if I had to be a most undiplomatic diplomat to do it. Edwire, though a generally jovial sort, had blustered, saying he did not want to give out military secrets. The queen, ever calm with those unreadable red eyes of her, hers, told me, we do not know. I think it is safe to assume that Baron Zaya did not tell me everything, but the facts of her story, which I later verified, after pointed interviews in Daggerfall, Sentinel, and Orsinium, was that they had learned that a certain powerful ancient weapon was going to be activated. 
I shan't give the name of it here, out of fear that it would be used against Wayrest. The king had attempted to bury it from the young adventurer who had discovered its whereabouts. Edwire believed, as it turned out quite rightly, that other powers in the bay had also attempted to win ownership of this device. What happened then, as Baron Zaya said, we do not know. The morning of the 9th and the morning of the 11th somehow merged through some sort of warp in the west, and Wayrest found themselves at war. Their land had expanded threefold, but they were under attack by Daggerfall to the west, or Sinim to the east, and Sentinel to the south. There had been no time to understand what had happened, the king said. They had simply reacted, sending their armies to defend their lands against these enemies, whose kingdoms had also gained great territorial advantage. The battles continue on, now months later, as I return to the Imperial City to make my report. What more do I have to say? They are bloody, violent clashes, as is always the case with modern warfare. But I have been to the black and desolate no-man's land between the four remaining kingdoms. No mortal army caused that devastation. I can say that the force that shook the Iliac Bay on the 10th of Frostfall, 3E417, was infinitesimally greater than the pink power these mighty kingdoms are wielding today. I can say that there were other strange events on that day which kept the kingdoms from breaking free of the empire, and accomplished likely more besides. And I can say there is nothing left of it, this power, this weapon, in the bay. The warp that it created swallowed it up. Current political affairs in the Iliac Bay. Almost 20 years have passed and the region, though transformed, has stabilised. There are no more disputed territories and the kingdoms of Daggerfall, Wayrest, Sentinel and Orsinium hold their new borders in relative peace. Wayrest spreads across the eastern coast of the bay, stretching from the land formerly called Anticlare to half of Gor Gorvedon. Edwire has passed on to his success... Ha! So again, Edwire has passed on to his ancestors, leaving his kingdom in the hands of his daughter Elisana, who has two children by her royal consort and seems likely to hold her father's lands. Your lordship may also choose to communicate directly with King Helseth and Queen Baranzai in Mournhold. Their primary preoccupations are, of course, with Morrowind's affairs, but they may still have useful observations upon Wayrest's ruling families and political environment that may aid you in your understanding of the court of Queen Elisana. King Gortwog of Orsinium controls much of the Rothgarian Mountains, as well as the profitable river coast of the Bule Sea. He persists in his demands that Orsinium be recognised as an imperial province, separate from High Rock. The Elder Council treats Gortwog as a... Gortwog, that's a funny name. As a recognised king and collects taxes directly from Orsinium. But officially, Orsinium remains a county of High Rock though technically it spans both the provinces of High Rock and Hammerfell. Sentinel has gained the most land, sprawling across the entire southern Iliac Bay, from Abaddon Gora beyond the Dragontail Mountains to the edge of Mournmount, Mournoth, or Sinium's territory. Queen Akarethi, at her death, left her enormous kingdom to her only surviving son, Lotan, who is now surely one of the most powerful kings in Tamriel. Daggerfall is still ruled by the Breton king Gothrid and the Red Guard queen Ub I. <laughs> I don't know what that one would be. Their land now encompasses all Western High Rock, from the border they share with Wayrest at Anticlare to the east to Yakalon to the north. They have four children now and are much beloved in their realm. If there are other repercussions of the mysterious warp in the West, they have not yet come to our attention in the course of 20 years of observation. Well, that was all very interesting history. But I don't... Oh, it's worth $25. I don't want to drop something worth $25. That's a lot. Anything else I can just drop on the ground? Hmm. I suppose I'll eat some more of these things. Eat some more rat meat. One more. There we go. Um. Welcome aboard, Mom. It will be an honor. It's starting to look like there's nowhere to sell anything here.
Hail. Hail. Damn. That's a pain in the neck. You think they have some kind of society or something? Where do they get their food from? Yes. No, I don't want to talk to you. I want to sell stuff. I didn't go through this door before. I don't think it's going to help me, but I didn't. Man. Hang on. Am I back here again? How do I get back here again? Walk around in circles. Alright. Just have to keep what I've got. Um... How many uh, arrows do I have now? 34 plus 68. And two steel bows. And three Dremora field arrows. Alright. Before we go on with any more stuff, I'm going to stop this episode. Because I've been going for an hour. So thank you for watching. And I hope you enjoyed yourself. And I hope you're looking forward to the next episode as much as I am. And if you did enjoy yourself, please leave a like and maybe subscribe so that you can catch more of the episodes. And I'll see you later. Bye.